is up guys it is the turtle girl with a leopard gecko <laughs> welcome to the channel and welcome back to the channel today we're actually going to be talking about heating your leopard gecko tank i know that there's a lot of videos on this topic but there's a couple of things i don't see that people normally talk about so we're going to be covering those today first off let's talk about why you need to heat your leopard gecko's tank that is because reptiles are cold-blooded basically their body temperature and also their metabolism is dictated by the temperatures around them they're not able to stay at a steady 98.6 like us humans. And so because of that, temperature is really, really important for leopard geckos. So leopard geckos are more of a desert species, so they definitely prefer warmer temperatures, but the way they get this heat is actually pretty interesting. So in the wild, leopard geckos are actually nocturnal, which means awake and active at night. Or, I mean, some people might consider them crepuscular, which is active during dusk and dawn, but for the most part, they're active during the nighttime. And this is so that they can avoid the really, really harsh sun and the heat of the day. And so the way they get their heat is actually different from most diurnal reptiles who use the sun, such as bearded dragons. So instead of actually absorbing their heat from above, the most natural way for them to receive heat is actually from the bottom. Because during the day, the sun might heat up those stones or rocks or the ground outside. And then by the time it's night, those items are still warm and they receive the warmth from the ground. So that is the most natural way for them to receive heat and that's why a lot of people recommend undertank heaters. As for the actual temperatures themselves, most people recommend a hot spot on the warm side of the tank to be between 85 and 90 degrees. Then the temperature gradient will slowly go down towards like the high 70s, which is for most people a normal room temperature. And so the first thing is the placement of your heat mat. You're gonna wanna place your heat mat onto one side of the tank or the other. Don't put it in the middle because that doesn't allow for as much of a gradient. It will just heat up the whole entire tank. So put your heater on one side so that you can create that gradient of warmth. The reason we do this is so that your leopard gecko can thermoregulate. As we've already mentioned, leopard geckos are cold blooded. So by giving them both a warm side and a cool side, they have the opportunity to move back and forth to decide the optimal temperature for their body. Now, along with your heat mat, you're going to have to hook it up to what we call a thermostat. Because most heat mats can get pretty warm, you want to be able to regulate that. So basically, how a thermostat works is it has a little temperature probe that senses the temperature that the heat mat is putting out. That heat mat is then plugged into the thermostat, so when that probe senses that the heat mat has reached the desired temperature, it will actually shut the heat mat off, and then it'll only turn the heat mat back on when those temperatures drop below the desired temperature. So in this way, it'll just shut your heat mat on and off and on and off to keep it at the, that desired temperature without it going over. So it's really, really important. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video really is to talk about thermostats and placing your probe because this seems to be something that confuses a lot of people. It confused me when I was first starting out. So I'm hoping that this can help clear up some of your questions. The important thing to remember is that both the placement of the probe and the temperature you set your thermostat work together to create whatever the temperature on the ground floor of the tank will be. So for instance, say you just set your thermostat to 90 degrees but then you put your probe directly on top of the heat mat. If you put that probe right next to the heat mat, the heat mat might be 90 degrees, but if it has to pass through glass or a layer of substrate, you might test the temperature of the surface where your gecko is actually going to be walking and living and realize, oh my gosh, this temperature is only gonna get up to 83 degrees or something because the thermostat and the probe work together. So my recommendation is either one, put the probe on the layer where your gecko is gonna be standing. So put the probe actually inside the tank where the gecko is actually going to be resting and then set your thermostat to 85, 90 degrees, somewhere in that range. Or if you're going to put your temperature probe outside of the tank, so like say underneath or right next to the heat mat, 
you need to adjust for that and set your thermostat temperature for higher. So for instance, in my tank, my temperature probe is actually underneath this layer of flooring vinyl. And so to accommodate for that, I actually have to set my thermostat at 95, sometimes even 98 degrees in order to get my hotspot to 90 actually on top of the substrate. I hope that makes sense. Now, once you've got your hotspot and cold spot, that's just one part of the equation as well. The other thing we have to think about is the actual ambient air temperature of the tank. So as for ambient temperatures for leopard geckos, I still like to keep this a little bit warmer because it helps with their metabolism. So either you keep your house warm or you can use something like a ceramic heat emitter to also give them warmth. Now, I would recommend doing more research on this because lots of people have lots of different opinions, but I would recommend using a ceramic heat emitter if you are wanting warmer ambient temps because it doesn't really emit any light and you do the same thing with the heat emitter. You'd still plug that into a thermostat and then put the probe somewhere where it can measure the air temperature. And so I hope that this video helped you understand heating a little bit better, but as always, do your own research, look at other sources. With leopard geckos, many people have many different opinions, so feel free to discuss in the comments. If this video did help you, feel free to drop a thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye-bye.